previously on Alone in the Dark. The guy said, well, will I be blinking the entire game? Am I going to be doing this every five seconds? Next Gen is not going to be used just for fancy fucking graphics and light effects. It's going to be used for everything sooner or later. But no, we just went from gameplay to cinematic instantaneously. And the transition is fucking flawless. This game is structured like a TV series or like a made-for-DVD style series with menus and everything. Now give me my stone! I don't have your stone, and fuck you anyway! Well, yes, this is a legitimate issue with the game. Is it a game killer? No. And watching these fuckers burst into flames after you suffer trying to kill them normally? That's just really damned rewarding in its own sense. I'm pretty sure everybody remembers me talking about how cinematic this game was. Well, it's no more expressed than in sequences like this, where right after that elevator hits the ground, you're officially playing in-game. You don't even have to pull up on the ledge. You can hang there all day if you want. And while a lot of people complain about the third-person perspective in this game, it really isn't all that bad. And as you can see right here, it's functional works just fine. There are points where it's going to be a pain in the ass, I'm not going to lie to you, but in general, you won't have too many issues with it. And not to say anything, but sequences like this are just damned cool and not expected from a survival horror game for one thing, or any video game for that much. I expect to see this kind of stuff in like Tomb Raider style games, not a horror based game. So it's a nice little surprise. And again, the controls are being explained to you as you play, so it's not like you can get lost, and they flash big time like that if it's important and something you've got to pay attention to. Now, you could actually hit the fan and survive, too. My friend proved this to me. I thought if you touched it, you were instantly dead, but apparently not. But see all these things that are going on right now? These are partially scripted and partially done in real time, so it adds a nice little variety to the gameplay. But this is no more expressed than when you get down a little bit further. And don't worry, I'm not going to spoil the whole thing. Let me just get to this one point to show you just how cool the scripted sequences are in this game. See, when all hell is breaking loose like that, you don't expect the game to actually be able to maintain what it's doing. And now we get to the first puzzle in the entire game, as far as I'm concerned. Aside from the whole blink and walk up a stairwell that people found so fucking complex and difficult, it should be very obvious what you need to do here, and if you don't do it in a certain amount of time, the game will actually prompt you on what to do. So it's not like it's expecting you to know how to play every single part exactly, and for people who don't quite get it at first, it will explain in depth how to do things later on. But basically, all you gotta do is force that wire over the ledge over there, which takes a few seconds, I'll admit, it's a little tricky, you have to balance your body weight against the thing, but it's entirely possible to do it, as you're about to see here. And again, this is another part people keep claiming is impossible, broken, you can't beat, blah blah fucking blah. And uh, I just want to show that it's not impossible to beat, and that it's very possible to get past this point. That's all you need to do. Was that so fucking difficult? So after all is said and done, we swing into this platform and we're introduced to... More third-person gameplay, but also now we realize we could switch on the fly if we hit the Y button. Yes, from first-person to third-person can be changed seamlessly, and you could even do that while you're climbing the ropes if you want. That's something most people don't even realize. You also may have noticed the fire. One of the best parts of this game, it spreads realistically, it looks fantastic, and it could both be either your greatest ally or your greatest enemy in this game. However, I want to once again point out something and show you that this game is actually trying to instruct you on how to play it and what to do in certain scenarios. And I also want to show you something. A lot of people told me that if they stand on top of this table and try to cross through here, they fall through the floor every time. Well, I don't see that happening, so another rumor and bullshit lie debunked. Anyway, all you gotta do is move the table out of the way and the game will proceed. Very simple, and if you get stuck on this, seriously, you shouldn't be gaming in the first place. Remember what I said about fire? Well, here's a good example of how well it spreads and how well you have to be in order to put it out and keep progressing in the game, otherwise you're completely screwed. Now, I want to point one thing out. Very unrealistically, the fire extinguisher never seems to run out of fluid. Now, in a game where they're trying to push some realism factor, this isn't very realistic. Also note the minor problem going on here where I can't really put the fire out because it's on a certain angle. And now this doesn't happen all the times, but this is a legitimate glitch in the game. But again, it's not a game killing glitch. All you gotta do is wait for the fire to the boards rather to come down and then put them out. Nothing complex, nothing that bad. Do it and move the hell on. Again, another problem that people bitched and moaned about. It takes five seconds to overcome. And this fire putting out stuff might seem a bit pedantic and stupid. But believe me, you don't do it all that much in this game, and you'll only be doing it a lot if you completely fuck up and set stuff on fire for fun or if you're a pyromaniac. Now I want to point out yet another thing people have been complaining about. They say the jumping in this game is completely flawed and broken. I've heard numerous complaints about this sequence specifically, not being able to get over it, and not being told that holding A is how you run in this game. You don't need to run. Did I just run to jump that? 
No, I did not. Once again, note the game telling us how to do stuff. The game centering on objects to make sure we can get past certain points. They give you everything in the world with this game, and if you can't do certain sequences, then I'm sorry, you're just not paying attention or you're just playing stupid in general. Now, I'm sure you saw that quick flash of the inventory right there. I'll explain that in a few moments. Let's just look at this. Realistically based, I don't have a key, and I can't break it open because I don't have anything to use. I guess you could use your fist, but you'd probably be bleeding from the knuckles. So what do you do? You blast the locking mechanism right off the goddamn door, and guess what? It worked! There's consistent complaints about the realism factor here, but I like stuff like that. It adds to it. And uh, watch the sequence very closely. It shows you a major thing, and something that even I had missed originally. But if you want to kill the fissures, all you have to do is set them on fire. So if you want to kill these fuckers, burn them. However, there's one bit in this game that gets my goat every single time. For a game toting realism and damage factors unlike most games I've seen, why the fuck is this possible? Now, I understand they didn't want to kill off players five seconds after the title sequence showed up, but that was just stupid. Plus, the fact that you have to grab that thing five seconds into the fucking opening of the game is ridiculous, and nobody's going to really be able to do it. But yeah, you're looking at the major set piece, the one that's been shown in every single trailer that was part of the dev process, and one of those big-ass scenes that everybody watched a million times, either in the trailers or otherwise seen screenshots of. It's the most touted sequence of the entire game, and the one that comes right before that cab chase sequence I already showed you. It's a highly cinematic sequence, very scripted, full of great surprises, such as this one coming up right now. This scene has a great sense of vertigo-inducing terror, and, frankly, some really good oh-shit moments as well. However, one of the coolest features this game has is a little system, kind of like a DVD chapter jump type thing going for it, where... Let's say you get stuck or you can't beat a part, you're not doomed. You can go to this menu here and you could jump backwards and forwards throughout the entirety of the game. Just keep in mind, by doing this, you negate any items you currently had on you, but you don't lose them if you've got a save file later on in, in the game. And also, you get no achievement point for completing the episode in its entirety. Me, personally, I have no problems with that, because if you have to do this and you can't actually beat the level, then you don't deserve a fucking achievement. But if you want to replay certain segments of the game without playing other ones, that's a fantastic thing to have, and more developers should look into having a system like this. However, remember when I said that fire can be both your greatest foe or your greatest ally? Here's why it could be your greatest foe. Some objects, depending on the distance you are from them, will not fucking light up, and when you need them to light up, when you need fire, you'll wind up killing yourself sometimes trying to ignite them. Now that's bullshit, and that's a major problem, one of the main flaws I have with this game. Ignition range. However, I can't be too pissed off about it because honestly, the chapter starts for each point in this game are so close to each other that if you should die, you're really not redoing too much all over again. So now I've got a longer object and let's see if this works better. It certainly should, or perhaps I should have just used my brain and used the more obvious opening to light something on fire, but of course this is not working either. Or so I think. Oh, look, it worked, finally. Thank fucking God! Oh, and I want to point something out. If third-person navigation was so impossible, then how the fuck am I managing to do this segment? It's not as bad as people claim. Yeah, it's a little stilted. It's not the tank controls of Resident Evil, though, and thank God for that. But you will make the occasional stupid mistake or error based on the controls. They're not 100% perfect. But they're not the worst I've ever seen, either. See, you'll do stupid shit like this, and you'll have to work your way back up. It's not as hard as you think, however. Pay attention very closely to how the developers left you an opening to get back to where you were in five seconds. Just climb this little wire here. As soon as it get up there, come on, Carby, move your ass. And poof! You're back to square one. So light another object and do it, or just run across normally. You know which direction you have to take now. Don't you? Are you paying attention? I certainly hope so. One thing I'd like to point out, however, is... Do not use the flashlight like this in third person, simply use it in first person, or don't bother at all, because trying to hit anything in the dark with a flashlight like this is like fucking impossible, and I can only do it because I've gotten so good at this game, I've actually mastered it to some degree. Seriously, don't fucking do it. You'll look like an idiot. Another thing to keep in mind, don't pick up items in first person. Do it in third person if you can. First person is only for shells, because trying to get the stuff off the floor in first person is damn near fucking impossible, thanks to the stupid system when items are too close, the game not registering which one you actually want to fucking pick up. And that's if the game even registers that there's an item there in the first place. In third person it will, in first person half the time it will not. 
second major flaw in this game. Final flaw. The A button does too much stuff. It turns on and off your flashlight. It makes you run. It makes you pick up items. So God forbid you're holding the flashlight and you want to pick up an item. Oops, now you're in the fucking dark. It's ridiculous and a clusterfuck to try to work that A button sometimes, and it really, really hampers the gameplay at times. Aside from that, there are no other major gameplay flaws. Anything you find is personal, and therefore, none of my fucking concern.